106.7 Light FM, Cubby, along with Christine. We have a movie star here today. I do. I know. I'm very excited. Lucy Boynton joins us. Good Hi. morning, Lucy. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thanks for being here. You've got a movie opening this week, so I know it's a busy week for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And am I the only one that has a tough time saying the name of the movie? You are not the only one. Okay, because when I first saw the name of the movie, I'm like, oh, wow, Chevy Cavalier has a m- – Yeah. <laughs> there's a movie about a Chevy Cavalier. But no, it's not. It's it's – Chevalier? 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 I, d- I, I question mark at the end of that. Chevalier, I think? Yeah, you, what, you, what's in the a, pitch? In a British accent, Chevalier. Well, you, I feel like anybody... I'm going to commit to that one. <laughs> yes, we're going to trust you. Anybody yeah. the, but the British accent, to me, you can say anything even wrong and it sounds good. But no, seriously. I'm not sure that's true, but I'll take <laughs> it. But you said it right. Tell I'll us lean a, into that. Tell us about this brand new movie opening on Friday. Yes, so Chevalier... Um, (laughs) follows Follows the life of Joseph Bologna um, who was a virtuoso uh, in the 1700s and was a kind of rock star of his day but he's been widely neglected from the history books so this is a kind of a new introduction to him to a new audience Um, and he was just a man of utter excellence he excelled in fencing in violin in composing in every kind of direction that he um, set his mind to and so that drew the attention of my character Marie Antoinette um, who made him a chevalier and brought him into her court and it's kind of the film follows his rise and then the fall kind of thank, thanks to her, in a uh, way. Uh-oh, yes. Yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> it can't end well with Marie Antoinette, can it? No. Uh, <laughs> Wait, we know the ending of the movie, don't we? Well, we know what happens to Marie Antoinette, at least. We don't know much about Chevalier. Um, and as you said, there's not much in the history books. How, how were you guys able to research then? I mean, it was so much down to Stephanie Robinson, our, our screenwriter, but... But yeah, and, and Alex Fitzalan, who plays Philippe in this, had a, is a kind of a history buff, and so lent me a few books. But um, but no, he, he yeah, he's been very much erased from the history books, and kind of compared to Mozart, um, most predomin- pre- predominantly. But um, but so I think that gave us more license to be interpretive with the story, and and I think therefore make it accessible to a modern audience because you get to really drive home the story there and make it more pointed, and then fill in the gaps f- with the historical facts wherever you can. Like for example, with Marie Antoinette, for whom there is a mm. plentiful plethora of resources on her right. and when the French Revolution. When you were younger, did you care about this kind of history, like? I, I appreciate history more <laughs> now as older, but like in high school, like I, I wouldn't care about the 1700s. That's the thing. I think that's why I'm so grateful to writers like Stephanie who make it, who draw such parallels with today's society, today's culture, that make it so much more accessible and relatable and understandable and appealing. Mm-hmm. Whereas, yeah, the way that we were taught it in schools, it, it, it feels it so distant, mm-hmm. yeah, and kind of stuffy period piece, right. whereas this is like the electric version of that. Mm-hmm. What is their relationship, Marie Antoinette and Chevalier? It's complex. I think it begins, she's just, he, he was such a magnetic person um, that she was very, very drawn to his success. And so there's an element of convenient allyship and convenience to her wanting to bring him in. She wants to be seen near him and next to him and wants you know, him to be a part of her court. And that's, I mean, attributed to his excellence his talent and his success but ultimately the reputation um and so it starts with this very positive kind of fun relationship that you get to see at the beginning of the film which is just beautiful and then as the landscape changes as the french revolution um is on the rise and the walls kind of start closing in on her she starts operating out of fear and listening to those around her and has a choice of of how to direct their friendship and then puts herself on the wrong side of history, and so it takes a much, much darker turn. You were done filming this, what, two years ago we were talking? Ah, yeah, Why so long from the end of filming to now? What, did the pandemic get in the good way? Good question. Or That's <laughs> a good question for such, like, pictures. Um, I don't know. I think, I mean, you know, we pr- premiered it at Toronto Film Festival at the end of last year, and then they were just waiting for the right time to, to release it to a broad audience. So apparently this is the right this time. This is the right time, yeah. Yep. Yep. Friday. That's right. Were you filming on location? We were. We were in Prague for a few months, which was just beautiful. The architecture there is stunning and so kind of perfect for this kind of period. I'm all about, like, the costumes, you know. Oh, my God. And the jewelry. Everything just looks so beautiful. How that was one of the elements that I was most excited to do 
dive into the costume, the hair and the makeup because that was just the complete departure from your own self and your own life. Mm -hmm. I didn't recognize you in the trailer. I'm like, uh, me neither. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. what? It was it was amazing. And to get, you know, from an acting point of view, just to have such a physical, tangible entry point into a different person and different identity. Um, but then the, the costuming process, Oliver Garcia, our costume designer, just got to have so much fun because Marie Antoinette, as we know, was mm. someone whose sentiment is more is more is more. But was it every day for like during shooting forever? Getting into the makeup. And Actually, no. No. No, I guess we were working with such pros that well, it was, yeah, it was surprisingly quick. quick. Yeah. yeah. When you leave the set. Are you able to leave Marie Antoinette behind or are you taking her home? I think in those earlier scenes where she was really young and fizzy and gregarious and excitable, there's something that kind of opens in you that makes you much more kind of engaged and that kind of stays with you. But then the later scenes where it does take that much darker turn, um, I think I became, you know, with Stephen Williams, our director, we became very analytical about how we wanted to play those and just keep pushing that and keep driving that home, that kind of ice cold villainy. And so that was very easy to then want to leave on set and completely depart from that, which again, the costumes and hair and makeup make so tangible because when you take that all off, you can leave that all in the trailer. Leave it behind. Yeah, yeah. leave it in the wig. <laughs> yeah. Now we want to talk about London for a while, our favorite place, right? Covey just got back. I yes. got back, she loves London. <laughs> mm -hmm. I went to London with the family this past week. Um, you were born here though, right? Not yeah, New York, but America, right? No, I was born in oh, New York. Oh, you were in New York? Yeah. But moved away, yeah. what, four? Yeah, four or five, moved to London. And so. you picked up the accent and everything. <laughs> Immediately, <laughs> over the course of like one summer, my sister and I were so determined to hold on to our American accents. And immediately, I mean, we started, as soon as one of us started saying tomato instead of tomato, was, <laughs> English girl, English girl. So where um, is home home, like right now? Home home is London. Okay, That's London, where my yeah. heart is. We love yeah. it. It's a great city, and it people are friendly. And really? Yep. I, th I think they are. I, mean, I think we just kind of keep it. Brits kind of keep to themselves. Like I remember coming back to New York after a while away um, and someone tried to talk to me in the elevator and I was like, oh, we do this? Because in the UK, <laughs> you just eyes down and pretend you don't see right, each other. Right, 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 right. I'm still confused on if you tip there or not. Like I, I, I didn't know what to do. Yes, but differently. Differently? Yeah, that's what I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, but differently. Well, one time I got a receipt at a restaurant and the, there was a tip that thing there and I put a tip in. The one time the tip was included. You know, oh like, yeah, sometimes so there's a twelve percent service right, charge. Right, right, right. <laughs> See, you know. I yeah, I mean, we can get technical about <laughs> <Yes>. this. <laughs> oh, and the whole family fell down the escalator in Waterloo at the tube. In the tube. Oh, yeah. Nice. That was fun. Oh yeah, they're God. okay. I still got scars from when that's happened to me, so wow. You fell down the escalator? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. those are, they're massive. The and it's always raining, so that's a oh, that slipping help. Yeah. Yep. threat. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, it's so clean, you know? Um, the train station is, like, perfect. Like, the, the tracks, there's yeah, no trash. Yeah, 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 yeah. No rubbish, no, as no you guys rubbish. say. <laughs> No yeah. rubbish. <laughs> so are you I'm, Okay, I'm proud, actually. Okay, we're, no, good. we're doing well. No, I'm a fan of London. I, we, we, we really love it. We love it. It is. It's one of my yeah. favorite cities. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love spending time there. What is in your future here for the rest of the year? I know we have the movie right now, but what's the after? The movie now, talking about Chevalier. And then um, at the end of the year, I'm executive producing and acting in a in a project in a Netflix series called One Day in December, which is being adapted by, it's based on a book, and is being adapted by and directed by Drake Doremus, who I've been following his work since he directed the film Like Crazy, which I just thought was so beautiful. And he handles love stories with this really brutal honesty, but beautiful hopefulness. So I'm so thrilled to finally get to work together. Um, oh, this is yeah. exciting. The name of yeah. the book is? One Day in December. Okay, so this yeah. way we can we can prepare. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, but no, I'm very excited about that one. And people can follow you all over social media. Where yes. can they find you? Yeah. Instagram, Lucy Boynton one because Lucy Boynton was taken. <laughs> but you can fix that now. I, I don't know that I want to. I'm, kind of <laughs> I'm, I'm emotionally attached to it now. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best of luck. The film thank is going to be so huge, much. and we can't thank you enough for your time. Thank you. Thank you for yours. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Lucy Boynton. Yay. 106.7 FM.